Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Nemalia by Lucky Duck Games, Black Rock Games, and La Boite de Jou. Hopefully I said that right. This is a two to four player game for ages 10 and up, and it takes about 30 minutes to play. And it is a card drafting game slash tile placement game. You will be getting three of these tile cards, choosing one, placing it down, and passing the others, revealing the card you place down at the same time with other players, and trying to score points based on the four objectives in the game. When you run out of cards, that will be a round, and after five rounds, you're going to check to see who scored the most points, not only for each round, but at the end of the game, who has the most on this track here. Will you score the most points throughout each round of the game as you draft these tiles and be declared the winner at the end? We'll talk about how to set the game up, how to play, and of course, our review. Beginning of the game is quite simple. You will take the main board or the main tile and place it down like a diamond, and then you will select one of each of the four different colored objective tiles. Place them either underneath or on top of the colored spaces. Then take the round marker and place it on number one, which it will go from one to two to three to four and to five for different objective scorings for at the end of each of these rounds. Take the victory point marker or tracker and place each of the tiles next to each other so that they are adjacent and the numbers match. It should go from zero all the way to 50. For each player playing the game, place a scoring piece on the zero on the scoring track and give each player a marker indicating a plus 50. They also flips over to be a plus 100 so that they can keep track of their score as rounds progress. All the rest of these are not needed. These are the extra objectives that you can use that have a front and a back. You can go ahead and set these aside. And there is a specific set of base objectives that you can play with, or if you're already familiar with these type of games, just choose whatever ones you'd like. Take the main game deck, shuffle it up, and then deal out three cards for each player playing the game. After each player have three tiles, they're basically ready to go, and we'll start showing you how to play. Playing the game Nimalia is just as easy, if not even easier, than setting the game up. What you'll do is you'll take your three tiles that you have in hand, and you will select one based on your objectives. Each round, you will have specific objectives that you're trying to compete for to score points. In round one, you're going to be competing for the blue and green. In round two, it will be green and yellow. In round three, it's going to be the blue and red. Four will be all three except for blue, and five will be all three of these except for the green one. So in the first round, you're looking for these objectives here, each of the different continents of green areas, and then polar bears next to each other, scoring you two points for each continent and each polar bear adjacent to each other. And you will take a tile and select it face down. And all of your opponents will do the same. They'll look at their hand, decide the best strategy, and place one of their tiles down. Then each player is going to pass clockwise their tiles. Finally, reveal tiles all at the same time. Once you've revealed your tiles, you'll go ahead and set them down on the game board. Now, if it's the first tile, you can just place it wherever, however you want. It doesn't really matter. Then, once again, you will select more tiles. You'll take another tile out, look to see how you'd like to place it, and you can set it down just like this, right next to, the, next to your tiles. And the other player will do the same thing, and then you'll pass and reveal. And when you reveal, now comes the interesting part. You can select to cover, but you have to at least cover one or more of these spaces. You can cover all of them if you'd like, as long as you create a grid that is no larger than six by six. So if I wanted to, I could go ahead and place this one just like that, covering over one tile side. And this one over here can go ahead and cover this just like that, covering one tile side. I could choose to do two or I could choose to do all four, but this is what I want to do. Finally, we're gonna be left with one tile and we're simply going to place them face down and then we're going to reveal them and we're going to select spaces and place them down. Once all the spaces have been covered or all the tiles you have have been laid, then you're going to check scoring for that round and you'll check the scoring objectives. In this case here, it is the different portions of green continents. So in this case, I have one and I have two for this player here. And we'll just say that this player is yellow and this player is green. So that is going to score me four points. Then I'll check to see my polar bears, and as long as they're adjacent to each other, which I have two of them there, that will score me four more points, putting me to eight. This player over here has one, two green areas, scoring them four points, and they also have polar bears, but none of them are adjacent, so that would be it. After that, you'll take the round marker and you'll move it to the next round, and then deal out three more cards to each player, so that you can then once again begin the draft phase. 
and you're going to use whatever tiles you had already previously placed as part of your gaming pool. So this is going to never change as far as uh, from round to round. You're going to leave everything here, but you can still follow all the rules by placing down tiles and making sure you at least cover one of the sides. Selecting one of these guys here, placing it down, other player does the same, and then revealing and covering up the tiles and hoping to score more points. In this round here specifically would be the polar bears once again, but it would also be rivers. For each river that you have that's adjacent that connects diagonally, you will score zero, then plus one, then plus two more points, then plus three more, and then four more, up to a total of 15 points if you have enough rivers. Uh, over here, uh, this one here is actually whoever has the least amount of lines is going to score three while everybody else will lose points. And that's pretty much how the game will go. Three cards, three cards, three cards, three cards. And finally on that fifth round, you'll just check to see how far along people are in the game. If you manage to cross the last point, the zero again, you're going to actually flip over your token and say, okay, I've got 50 points now. And if you ever do cross it again, then you'll flip it over for 100. Some of these games can be very high scoring. But at the end of the fifth round, you'll check to see who has the most points, and whoever does is the winner of the game. Namalia is a strategy tile placement puzzle game. Your objective is to try and score the highest points you can from round to round for each of the objectives that are available to you. As rounds progress, new objectives become open and available depending on the round, and at the last two rounds, the fourth and fifth round, you'll have the most access to the most of the objectives. Now, if you don't want to start with the very basic ones, you can select any of them as long as you choose one of each color, and if you need help identifying what each of them do, the entire back of the rulebook will explain in detail what they all do and how they all function as far as points go, because the game is very, very simple. This is all you need to know for the rules of the game, the rest is just going to be a glossary of the different types of scoring you can have throughout the games that you play. Each player is utilizing a token, which I believe is based on one of each of the different biomes of the game. So you're going to have water, and you're going to have ice, and uh, the plains, and then the forest or like rainforest area. Um, and each of the games will function differently based on what your objectives are. Some games you'll want lots of lions or in certain ways. So some games you won't want any lions. Some of them you want polar bears in certain ways, or you'll want penguins in each of the different columns. Uh, connecting rivers will score you points, whether it be the longest river or as many river pieces as you can get. And then of course the biomes function as well. And you're basically just kind of trying to create your own, like, I guess it's like a sub Saharan African like biome that, uh, like, push everything to maybe it's even a world game where you're like kind of trying to trying to put everything to how it needs to be based on the objectives. Now this is a tile placement game first and foremost, which means that sometimes you will be left with tiles in your hand that you do not like, and they may not help you. Sometimes there will be great tiles in your hand that you'll get, especially in the first round, you can select that best possible tile and pass, and who knows what you're gonna get eventually. And as the game ramps up, more and more points will be scored because you're gonna have a larger base area. Like I said, this is going to be a six by six grid. So it's gonna kind of look something like this. One, two, three, four, five, and six. That's how long this game can technically get. And then it can also start going across as well. So it can get actually a pretty, it's a pretty big grid overall. And so you're trying to kind of transform this grid as best as possible. And if you're not careful, by the fourth slash fifth round, you might be covering over tiles you don't necessarily want to cover, but because you have to place, once you get one of these tiles, you have to make sure you at least cover one space. And in some cases, you'll have to cover over more, especially if you already have that six by six, making you have to make difficult decisions throughout the game. This is a quick, easy to learn family game. It involves some deduction and some like strategy, like what are they going to get rid of and pass to me? What did I last see from the tiles? And how likely am I to get this tile back when I pass it? Now, obviously in a three or four player game, you're pretty much not going to see the tiles that you pass, but in a two player game, you have a little bit more of like a, I've got three, Callie's gonna take one. Am I gonna get this next one back based on what she has on the field? Otherwise, you have to play as though you're only going to get one of these and you need to choose the best one for you. And when the next one comes around and you only have two left, you have to make sure you choose the best one there. And finally, the last tile is mainly just about where is this tile going to go to give me the most points and or deal the least amount of damage to my point threshold in the game. Now, I'm terrible at these games. Every time I play these type of games, like puzzle games, that make me think and have to like, construct certain things in a certain way, I just always do poorly. But this one is really well constructed. It works very well. It's very easy to understand, very easy to teach. The objectives are straightforward and simple, and they can be changed to change the style of gameplay. Um, 
this is definitely one of those games that my wife really would enjoy. She really likes the idea of like crafting a puzzle and thinking and deducing what the best strategy is and where the best placement is for the tiles. And she knows kind of what tiles are gonna work best when it comes to the third and fourth and fifth round because you have to think about the different rounds as they uh, are starting to come up because you'll have to go, okay, next round blue and red are gonna be important. But after that, then I'm gonna have to worry about green and yellow. And then finally, it'll be like all three of these guys here. And how can I score? I have to keep this scoring value up. And then in the fifth round, you go, okay, I'm in the fifth round now. I'm never gonna have to score for this green tile slash the polar bears. So now I can start covering those without as much of a penalty. And that's pretty much it. That's the idea of the game, constructing and basing your tiles around what objectives are coming up, what objectives might not be coming back, and what your opponents are gonna be likely passing to you based on their grid. Uh, if you like a puzzle game, if you like tile placement and a mini draft game, something that's easy, quick to learn, fits in any pretty, pretty much table space. I mean, it can be a larger table space for four players because the grids can get kind of big, but it is a small box game with a lot of heart in it, a lot of different objectives that you can choose from, then this is something I would strongly suggest you take a look at. Now, me personally, I suck at these games, so I'm likely only gonna play these games when somebody asks me to play, and I'll likely lose, just because my mind isn't built for it, but just because that, just because I'm not super great at it, and it's not a game I would typically go out of my way to play, doesn't mean it's not a great game, and it's not something that people will enjoy. In fact, I imagine most of my friends in my group would enjoy this game, it's just not really for me. Artwork is solid, uh, all the spaces and like everything is very easy to understand, very easy to see. Quality of the components are great. You have these little wooden meeples here for all the different biomes and everything kind of lines up and has this kind of cool looking table presence for a grid based tile placement game with some strategy. Uh, overall, Amalia is a great game, but I'm going to be playing it when asked to. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Nimalia by Lucky Duck Games and all the rest of them. I, I don't want to butcher their names. Black Rock Games and Le... Yeah, it's French, so don't, don't quote me on that. Uh, you can also go ahead and click the link in the description where you can go ahead and pick up the game if you'd like, if you're interested in the game, as well as, of course, checking out unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter, lists, and more. We do a live stream every Wednesday and whatnot, and every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST, PST on Twitch, Facebook, and YouTube, where you can watch us play games just like this one. In fact, this would make for a great live stream game that you can watch and see others enjoy, because uh, I think people who like puzzle games are gonna really, really be into this one. Uh, that's pretty much all I got this time, and as always, I look forward to constructing a world-like grid with you next time.